Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Robin if you've not seen me before and my German Shepherd is Kaiser. As you would have seen in the recent kind of titles or if you follow us on Instagram or YouTube already, Kaiser has not been well. This has been the worst week of our lives and I think definitely Kaiser's life. It has been scary, stressful and expensive. <laughs> so I'm gonna get into it and tell you what's been going on. So, where do I start? Me and my partner went away for five days. We had family look after Kaiser. My mum-in-law to be, or mum-in-law and sister-in-law to be were looking after him. Um, and then we were away for nearly a week, but we were in the UK. So we weren't far, only about two and a half, three hours away. So went away, had updates. Guys, he had a whale of a time going to the beach with the family, went on nice sunny walks, had lots of cuddles, didn't think much of it. Then Sunday we came home a little bit earlier, so we left at midnight and was aiming to get home about three o'clock, but the roads were nice and quiet. My mum-in-law called me about 2am and said, how long are you going to be? We said, actually, we're only going to be about 10 minutes away. And she was like, okay, Kaiser's not well, he's being sick. Well, two weeks ago, he had pancreatitis and was being sick again. So I thought, oh, he's had a flare up or he's eaten something or the beach water hasn't agreed with him, which can happen. And I said, right, wasn't thinking much of it. We're driving home, put my foot down, da 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 da, and we're getting home. Walk in, it's about, yeah, just gone two o'clock in the morning. Kaiser is in the bathroom, all the lights are on. He's foaming and it's not like a saliva it's like a thick white sticky foam coming out of his mouth it was disgusting bless him he was crying in pain he couldn't move he couldn't get comfortable instantly I was like right okay this isn't what I thought it was it's not like him being sick he couldn't be sick and he was trying so hard so that obviously panicked me my best friend is a vet nurse she's qualified so she lived literally around the corner I called her and by pure luck she answered she rushed around and she said, I think this could be a p potential twisted stomach. We need to get this sorted. So I called my vets who have a 24 hour emergency. And they said, by the sounds of it, it could be, but we don't know, you have to bring him in. So my friend took us, da -da -da, drove us in the car, me and my partner, he sat with Kaisy in the back. She was just telling us about what they could be going through um, and the procedures when we drop him off, we got there. They went, right, we're going to take him to x-ray straight away. We were all quite flustered, a bit stressed. He was deteriorating, getting worse, more just away with the fairies. So they whipped him away. And then within, they said, do you want to wait for the results? We said, yes. Within five, ten minutes, they came down and said, look, his stomach is twisted. We can't untwist it with a tube down like we would hopefully do. We need to operate. Are you happy for us to? Yep, blah, blah, blah. And we had to pay like an emergency fee and that was 700 pound like up front we had no choice we just paid it we have insurance i'll explain that in a minute so we paid that they said it would be about an hour and a half go home so we went home by this point it's like three o'clock we're dilling and dallying around four o'clock heard nothing got to about five and they finally called and i'm not gonna lie i saw the vets come up on my phone and my heart sank um, because they said it was like a 50-50 chance and then when they saw the x-ray that they said it was a 40-60 chance of survival um we were so stressed because he's going to be nine this year he's had other health issues i thought i don't know so they said he survived they untwisted but this is where it gets complicated so when he went in for pancreatitis they had to do ct scans and found there was like a mass around or in his spleen they were meant to be ultrasounding him next week but decided just to take the spleen out because it picked up again on the new ct um, and x-rays with his twisted stomach so they took the spleen out took the stomach and untwisted it they took away a dead section of it where it obviously started to die because it was twisted they said the lining was quite thin on part of it and was about to rupture so either way he would have just bled out and died and then they had to like staple it open so it won't twist again. And then they had to tuck in, I think, some bits where they had to take off um, when it was dead. So it was pretty intrusive. Um, it was a life-saving surgery. It was very um, quick. Basically, the vet came in. It was kind of like a dr drama. I was like, we need to do this now. Da -da 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 -da. And it was kind of like, okay. We, like, we didn't even flinch. And he is my dog. My partner appreciated that. And we both agreed we wanted him to have that surgery. 
He went in, he survived, but they said, we really don't know if he'll survive recovery, sepsis, relapse, bleeds, um, but they just weren't sure. So I said, can we go and visit him later? Which we did. I will insert the video of me kind of seeing him where they've shaved him both sides and his scar was covered um, as well as you'll see with a little kind of bandage and yeah he just drank they weren't expecting him to eat or anything we took him a teddy they laid down a spider-man towel we took him his little paw print towel and he could barely stand he was kind of wobbling he was so off his face on medication pain relief and as anesthetic still he was just wobbling and we really weren't feeling hopeful because he just looked so rubbish and they said we really don't know if he's going to pull through like he's he's a strong boy for surviving this far so we said okay gave him a kiss and then we've got an insurance which will cover up to four thousand so that basically was gobbled up just in the scans and operation and then anything after that we pay so we started paying ongoing treatment and they said he'll be in possibly five ish more days because he needs to then recover keep continuing regular bloods he had a bit of a blip with his bloods the next day so i said can i come back in again they said yes they said we would like to see if he would eat because we need to see if his intestines gut and stomach and everything like that is working i said okay and i brought in some cooked chicken and a little bit of rice just basically bland as hell and he started to eat and i was like wow and he looked amazing he looked a lot more perked up he actually lay down where he didn't lay or sit when we first saw him, literally a few hours after his op. Um, they said he was still on quite strong painkillers after this. So he went in at two o'clock in the morning on Monday. We saw him Monday midday. And then we had vets called us all throughout the day for updates. And then we saw him on the Tuesday at lunchtime again. But that was just me because my partner was working in London. And yeah, he was actually played with his toy in the aspect of he picked it up and walked around. We weren't obviously playing because of his stitches and him not feeling well. And the vet said, look, we're still not out of the woods, but it's great that he's starting to try to eat because he's showing interest with me because like, he gets very, very stressed. And they said it can, could be behavioural, but he's not eating. I said, I'm not surprised. And they said um, he could be in for a few more days. I said, that's fine to keep monitoring. And then we... Court got a call the next day, they said he perked up even more, they took him off all the strong painkillers and he was coping, he wasn't being sick, the stitches was looking good, no infection, um, his bloods were looking good, they said, to be honest, we might send him home on this Wednesday afternoon, evening, I was like, wow, that's quick, from literally nearly dying to then coming home two days later, they said he surprised us all, he's bounced back very quick, it will be a long, long, long recovery. So he can't have hydrotherapy now for a while because of his stitches. And then he's gonna get stiff with his hips. So we're gonna have to try and sort that out as he's recovering. And yeah, so we went in and there's loads of complications that we have to just be aware of. Potential bloat again, not a twist to stomach. So look out for the signs of sickness. They wanted him to go home and do a poo because he hadn't done one. So that was the updates we had to keep up for. They said he'll be passing like dead blood and it's disgusting but like any parts of the stomach or whatever's left because they emptied the food out of his stomach and yeah so we picked him up i uh, will insert a picture of him with his little bandage shaved stomach and his new little cone the cone depresses him and it is now 31 degrees in the uk we are sweating so i have been panicking his recovery has been long he gets two post-op checkups so he had one friday and they said he is doing so well. One of the vets actually came out because he had so many vets dealing with him. They said, I can't believe he's alive. I'm not going to lie, especially because he was only in two weeks prior for pancreatitis and it was quite severe. So it's been stressful. We had a lot of tears and the insurance have been amazing. The vets have been amazing. We took in chocolates, we took in little thank you cards. Um, he's still not out of the woods. I'm watching him every hour like a hawk. I'm poking him. Are you still breathing? We're not sleeping properly. We haven't slept really since we got back from the festival that we went to in the UK. It has been stressful. Um, but I'm so pleased we insured him. Um, I don't know how much longer we'll have with him because anything could happen. But yeah, we are so lucky to have Kaizy and he is worth every penny because when his face just came through that door when we visited him in the vets, it has been delighted up our lives so yeah very stressful um it's common in larger breeds they said because they've got such large diaphragms there's more room for it to twist where 
if you've got smaller dogs it's not so that is something to consider i would still have larger breeds if we get another dog in the future um to be honest we will it just won't be a rush and it won't be till kai's is passed um, we have so much coming up this year with Kaiser being involved in the centre of it. He needs to be there, so <laughs> we're getting fit and fighting. Hopefully he'll be feeling better soon. I will be updating you guys on his Instagram, which is linked below. If you want to keep finding out updates as well, subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I'm so thankful that Kaiser is still here with us. And yeah, hopefully we can go back to our adventures sooner rather than later. Bye. Thank you.